what are you guys talking about? Like, what what are you guys drinking? Because I need it's twenty twenty. I need like three. They're drinking the 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 liberal education system. That's what we're getting taught in school. It's insane. And how do you debunk your education? People are like, no, you're wrong. I'm like, you know more than the education book. system. Like, yeah, <laughs> I read it in a class, and like, my, it was with my senior class. Like, and that, and I've heard so many, so many college age people be like, I learned this strictly from my textbooks, and I'm like, well, there, there's where you went wrong. So, uh, who wrote the textbooks? It's crazy. It's not the guy who did it. He was yeah, like, right. Who's in the classroom teaching? Probably not the guy out there doing it. Right, and and at the same token. Having amazing teachers is so vital. Uh, one of my favorite yeah. teachers, uh, Coach Widener, he's a history uh, teacher there in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Dude, he he knew history way better than I would say any professor I ever saw in college. Uh, I took a few history classes in college, but he was passionate about it. Like he pushed us. Yeah. It, the first time yeah. in my life, I stayed up till midnight writing a paper. My mom and dad are looking at me like, "You're midnight. You still writing?" I'm like, yeah, "Coach Widener's gonna kill me if I don't do good on this one." You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he pushed you to, to learn, uh, not only learn it but understand it. And teachers yeah. are have a vital role, and that emotional attachment I have to my teachers is why whatever they tell me is so cemented into who I am. Yeah. I think I think that's something that a lot of people need to do better at as teachers more on the higher level of, of education. So the universities and colleges is understanding that the right answer in a lot of these classes, obviously, there's math classes, there's classes, you know, science, biology, there's one right answer. Right. But um, we have these classes where we're supposed to be pushing creativity so that these individuals can think outside the box. But having been in college, I mean, I went to two different junior colleges. I lied, three different junior colleges and uh, uh, two different universities. And I show. learned. You went to three colleges. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, you learn that they're not teaching you to think creativity. Like, they're, they're not trying to spark creativity. They're trying to get you to think the way that they think you should think. And I'm not a traditional dude. Like, I never have been. I've been bad at school since the beginning. Um, I want to do it the way that I think's best and is going to benefit me, not the way that every single person has done it before me because I already know the result of that. Let me guess. You were the kid who was super upset at the teacher giving some assignment that doesn't make sense. And you're looking yeah. at it like, like this would not like, they'd be like, it's a, cla it's a, it's a, it's a class example. I'm like, but it would never happen, but it's a class example. Like, but it would never happen. I'm just like, why are we doing things that would never happen? I'm about to go out in life and you're teaching me how to count ducks. Like, what are we doing here? Give me something that makes sense. And they wouldn't. They hated me. And needless to say, I got bad grades. So there's that. Yeah, I'm going to say that uh, that probably didn't end up too well for you. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm surprised I'm, they even I'm, got into college. Well, you know what? They love money in college. They love it. They'll let you keep yep. going back as much as you want to as long as you can. As, much, as long as you're paying. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I had a uh, fourth grade teacher uh, make me cry. Uh, her name was Miss Myers. She must have been 180 years old. Uh, she, she smoked cigarettes uh, the way that somebody would smoke uh, – well, not smoke, but inhale, like, oxygen. That was her, like, cigarette pattern. <laughs> Just always. Yeah, bless her heart. Gosh. She's, she's since passed. But, um, you know, I'm, I've already said it, so I'll go ahead and say the funny part about this. She would lean over us, you know, four years old, trying to – I don't know what we were doing. In Oklahoma, probably learning the alphabet. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, but, but she would lean over and be like, can, can I help you? And you're like, oh, man, no, I'm just like, are you sure? Like, you know, that and you're extra, just like, that uh, extra voice, uh, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of like lingers and then hits you like directly. Uh, and you're like, mm, nope, I'm super mm, sure. I, I have the wrong answer, but I'm ready to turn this in. I'm done. I am. I'm yeah, done. I don't care. Give me the F. I'm out. <laughs> I, uh, I had corrected her. I can't remember what, what it was, but something on the chalkboard. Uh, we still had chalkboards back then. Does anybody doesn't know what those are look them up um <laughs> there was like a word should be spelled and so i'm looking at my at my textbook and i'm like mm, I, I don't think that's how you spell that so let me see how that uh miss myers I, I think you misspelled that word without even looking she turns around and says well bobby if you're so smart why don't you come up here and teach huh and i was like oh that's the worst i'm like that's six, the worst. seven years old i don't know eight yeah eight years old i'm like oh mm -mm. Uh, I'm good. I'm gonna go go over here and cry in the bathroom. Uh, yeah, yeah this is the rest of my life. 
I appreciate it. <laughs> right? So Nowadays, they fire deal. teachers over calling kids out. Yeah, they're like, how dare you call my son out? And normally, you just go, like you say, you go cry on your own and you get past it. Next time, you don't speak up and talk over the teacher. <laughs> I like, learn, listen, learn. Yeah. Learn. That, that's that old school form of teaching, though. Like, I remember they used to call on kids to read in class. And I, my anxiety would go through. The, I can't read. Like, I mean, I can but like when it comes to reading in front of class, all of a sudden, like all words do not connect. And they're like, okay, John, and like randomly pick because they want to make sure you're following along. Mm. And they'll pick me and I'd freak out and I would sound like the most illiterate human being on, on planet Earth. And it was always so embarrassing. I just used to be horrified of that. And I don't even think they do it nowadays in class because it causes trauma to children, which I believe, but you know, I, I it, it helped me. Way, right? Like, I don't know. It is. Maybe great leader who was like yeah i had it pretty easy i uh grew up in the suburbs <laughs> cool uh wednesday night church sunday morning church and uh yeah i eat a lot of kfc and uh here i am yep <laughs> just made it successful barely tried at all yeah come to find out five yachts and you know 10 islands later <laughs> woke up one day success slapped me in the face and millionaire no that's the white privilege that's what that is uh, oh yeah that is true that is true okay so Speaking of motivation, though, I have something. Hopefully, this plays uh, from my uh, iPhone here. You put out a, uh, a TikTok earlier. Let's see if we can play this audio real quick. Can you hear that okay? Uh, barely. Let's try this again. So I'm not Joe Rogan or Jamie, um, so I'm bringing it over here. <laughs> no, you're good. I do the same thing. I'm like, can you hear it now? Can you hear it now? I wait for a thumbs up, and I'm like, all right, cool. I say it to you, it resonates with me. So this is for me, probably more for you, but I'm glad you're here to listen. Can you hear that okay? We need to understand yeah, I can hear that. And the world we created is crumbling around us. We got to move forward still, okay? I've, I haven't been posting too much the last couple months just because I've been overwhelmed with just life. You know what I mean? Like everybody has that brick wall called life hit them every now and then. Understand if you sit and wallow in the fact that things aren't going right, you're waking up, you don't have drive, you don't have motivation, you don't have dedication, you don't have a path, you don't have guidance of any sort, and you feel like you're just floating and, and not in a good place and not in a good way. Trust me, I know how you feel. But understand sitting and waiting in it and being like, ah oh, man, you know, this is this is horrible. It's gonna stay there, it's gonna swarm you, it's gonna consume you, and you're gonna be stuck in it. You've gotta move forward and take one step at a time moving forward. And it's not gonna all happen in one day, but you gotta start one day. So trust me, if you're feeling like this, there's other people out there that are dealing Dude, with Dude, you look so pumped right now in this video. So I encourage you to go grind, go Dude. <laughs> so what is up, guys? You got the same bandana. I was... I, dude, that was literally this morning. I mean, I got the same shit on under this. Uh, oh, okay. That was this morning, man. I'm, I'm, I was feeling it this morning. Like, life life for me is not going great, to be honest. I, as a lot of Americans, it's not going great. Like, I'm dealing with a ton, a ton of shit going on. Um... And like, man, sometimes you feel you, like it hits you, like even starting a business, like starting a new clothing brand, like you, you do so much work on it and you get like three quarters of the way there. You're like, why am I doing this? And no one's even going to buy it. No one's going to like, I'm just spending all this time on nothing. I got bills. I got to pay. I got this. I got to do. And you want to just stop or you have, you know, business that just keeps falling through and everybody wants to stop. But I'm like, stopping literally only just lets you wallow in whatever that bad feeling is longer. Like that's all it does. That's Cause I've done it before I've stopped. Oh, I cannot tell you how many times I've been there this year, right? Yeah. And uh, I'm speaking for myself here, but when I look back on you know, 2019, I, that was my first year, like full year, um, out of the Army. And I had a great, unprecedented year, uh, if I do say so myself. Everything, <laughs> nice. Everything ran, yeah, everything ran as smoothly as possible. Um I got, uh, there's like 500 new advisors uh, nationwide for Penn Mutual, who's, uh, uh, who I work for with uh, Bobby.Money. And uh, so it's a financial firm that's been around for 173 years. And I placed second in, production, second in production out of 500 nationwide new advisors. And so 2019, I'm walking to 2020 like, mm, 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 what is up? Yeah, <laughs> you got your dancing shoes on. Yeah. You're like, I'm, I'm going to have some fun. Let, let me tell you about my New Year's resolutions. Oh, oh, you, <laughs> oh, you don't even know. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have uh, March hit. And I'm like, oh, oh, this isn't going to go Stings a little bit. at all. This is, oh, the whole country's going to, we're going to shut down. NBA, 
the NBA. Oh, so I can't go to the movies. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So can't meet anybody. That'll be easy to find clients. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where there were it's... only days. You know, like two or three days where I'm doing busy work, and then I wake up like this one day. I'm like. You know, Gary V in the mirror. I'm like, you are awesome. Everyone loves you. You're funny sometimes. <laughs> you know. I, I, I feel it. Hold up, you froze for a second. There you go. Yeah, I, I, I feel it. Um, it. It's, I feel like I've woken up like that more times this year than I ever really have just purely because, I mean, man, it's overwhelming. Like, I, I don't even know how to break it down. Like, like, like ever since I started speaking out about Trump, um, I mean, the first three months, like I hit probably about 200,000 followers, two clients that I had lined up, probably $400,000 income total between the two of them dropped me. They were just like, one of them didn't say it was because of that, but they were like, well, we don't, we don't feel like we, we really align, um, you know, and they were, they were, they're moving from California to Texas, right? Liberal to the max. Um, they followed me on my social media and all that different stuff. Um, and then when I, when my TikTok finally kind of crossed over to Instagram, my clients started to see that. And then, and then two of them dropped out and said, no. So that was about eight months of business that was supposed to bring me in $400,000, just gone. So that's where it just stuck it to me. And I was like, I still haven't recovered from that because now I have, you know, eight months of no work that I had sectioned out for them. And now I got to find work to replace that. And I couldn't. And then COVID and all that other stuff just made it difficult because people were holding on to their money tight because they didn't know, you know, what the economy had to, you know, uh, uh, provide. So it just, you know, it was bad. But but then again, it's like one of those things that I, I made a video on TikTok early on. I'm like, I really don't care what happens personally. If I can't honestly say what I truly believe in a respectful manner and like and, and not continue on my life, then screw it. I don't want it. Like, I'm not going to pretend to be someone else just to get your paycheck. Like, that's bullshit. Like, I'm not doing it. Um, I got, I got to hit on this. That's why I started my own business. Man, you're you're pumping me up over here. I'm like ready to take the city over here. Knoxville, watch out. Right. Uh, I have been told, like, as soon as I get into you know sales, like financial industry, it's sales. It is about relationships. Um, in the past, it has been. I hope I'm changing that and actually making it about analytics and performance. Um, but I was told never talk about politics, never talk about religion. Yeah. And I, when someone told me that. Uh, I won't say who it was. It's my dad. Um, he said that to me, and I was really surprised. I was like, wow, that's kind of like who I am now. I am a Christian, and I'm a conservative. Yeah. And I think I'm going to be okay being who I am, but he is right. Uh, in general, most people cannot be themselves and actually be around other people because they are assholes. Yeah. But if you can be yourself and be around other people and be nice um, and respectful – I think you'll earn more business with somebody on the opposite side of the aisle or, or different religion if you have that yeah. level of respect for each other. And um, exactly, I have, I have clients who are so far from my political views and religious views, you wouldn't even believe it. Um, but I love them, and they love me. I hope, fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> but, but we have great, we have a great relationship. So yeah, I, 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 I think that's, that. I think that's a really important thing too is like for me which is crazy to me is like being so respectful and i find that to be the most important part about it like i i, I mean you probably see it on my tiktok i say it all the time i don't care what you believe as long as you know why you truly believe it and it's not just this sheep following sheep being like hey you know this is what the people that look like me do or this is what the people who live where i live do if you know why you're supporting joe biden and for whatever reason I'm not going to condemn you for it. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't care. You have other things in your life that he may serve better for you. Like, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to tell you that what's best for me is best for you. So, so to have that view and still have people be like, just because you purely, even though you accept me, because you purely associated with the side I don't agree with, I got to eliminate you from my life. To me, that just seems like we, we polarize things so much that I'm just like, at that point, like I said, like, if you can't accept me being that respectful and having my views, then again, I don't want it. I don't want anything to do with you. Like it's not, it's not, it's, if you can't accept respect, then gosh, then what, what are you here for? Like, yeah, what, just, what do do? I don't get it. Yeah. What's the point? What, how was how does your life move forward now? You just make your little own, like little eco chamber and live in a little, you know, hut. somebody really funny. I, I, maybe you've heard this, but, uh, if you wake up and you, you know, get ready for work, you go to work and on the, drive there you stop and get some coffee and you're, you run into an asshole somebody who's an asshole 
you know, that happens. But at the end of the day, if you keep running into assholes, you're probably actually the asshole. <laughs> that, is, that is the best. That is, yeah, I couldn't have, I've never heard it said better. I couldn't say it better than, than that. That is exactly true. All those people that are always pissed off because the world is rude and mean. It's like, wait a minute. There's a lot of us that are quite happy. So I don't think it's us, actually. Yeah. Maybe, Take a look around. you know. Yeah. I always tell people that in business though. Like, I'm like, are you failing? Is something not going good? Does this keep happening? And you keep pointing fingers. I don't know. Let's just get, let's get touchy real quick. Let's talk about the black community. Um, maybe there's a common denominator here. You know, what's, what's the common denominator across all situations. If you're not being successful um, because what, what's the common, is it the government? Is the government the, something that's in every single equation well, you is, you is, been, you know, I, I got hit by a deer and now I, vehicles took off. I can't do anything. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, 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 or it's whatever, anything. And then some, I mean, you got people that lose their legs, lose their arms. They, you know, as you can, you know, you go, you go to war, you have these, the, 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 the issues that come back with you. Now, is it directly your fault? No, but again, you got to focus on the common denominator. This is something that is going to be carried with you moving forward. So do you just blame it on that every situation? Or do you learn how to adapt with that situation and still make the best of it? And I feel like nowadays we're so quick to blame because it's easier and we're creating a culture that's like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. How can we help rather than, you know, the hard love that we all got as kids where your dad or, or, or mom would be like, oh, you can't. OK, well, then don't. Mm, and then you're like, crap, <laughs> they're not going to help me. I better figure it out. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I have three older brothers and they uh, I guess my parents saw what my brothers were doing to me and they're like well you just kind of sidestep this and looks like it, the brothers are going to take care of this all on you know, their own they put me on a bicycle and just push me down a hill like good luck i'm like <laughs> all right you know, i gotta learn this you know on my uh on my own but i think you're right um you know there's tough love and i think it's really comes down uh, for myself to one-on-one -on -one conversation when this yeah. COVID thing happened um I mean, I just got back from my a ski trip I've been planning for 15 years. It took 15 years for me to save up and go on this trip, uh, snowboarding. Yeah. And I uh, got back and COVID hit, and I'm thinking, okay, how real is this thing? I uh, took Calc 1, 2, 3, and 4. You know, I was infantry, EOD, then counterintelligence in the Army. So I'm pretty good with, you know, uh, analyzing situations. <laughs> you would have to be. All right. Uh <laughs> I'm going to pretend I am anyway, but <laughs> I, literally every single person I talked to uh, who was, I would consider conservative, you know, I'll, I'll bring up COVID. I'm like, well, you know, it's um, according to this, this data, like data, this is real. Yeah. And it seems to me like Italy's going through a political turmoil over a virus. And I'm not sure how you politicize a virus, but they are really doing it over there and doing a good job. And if I was talking yeah. to somebody on the conservative side, they say, well, Italy, they got socialist, you know, hospitals that are terrible hospitals. That's why the COVID's spreading. Okay. Tucker Carlson, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> I know where you watch your news now. And then if I was talking to a uh, liberal friend of mine, they'd say, yeah, yeah, let's talk about the virus. And then they get me in the huddle. And they're like, so fuck Trump, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what are we doing here? What? <laughs> <laughs> like there's a virus coming. I'm not sure if like everyone's like looking around, uh, but this may shut down the world economy. Like let's talk about it. Yeah. And I went yeah. on Facebook Live. I think maybe maybe 800, a thousand views. I've never been more yeah. nervous in my life, dude. Never. Jeez. Uh, I think it was. That's it because it's a it's a dangerous shutdown. subject. Uh, yeah. Dude, uh, it was two days after the NBA shut down, and. Back to the one-on-one -on -one conversations, one of my best friends from basic training, uh, Daryl Brownfield, is actually on one of the podcasts. Oh, I froze. Hold on. This is a great look at me right there. Can't get looks that good out there, except no clue. <laughs> Wait, I want to be fr it froze out. Yeah. yeah. Where'd you go? To be good now. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Great look, Bobby. <clears throat> he, he, he called me and said, Bobby, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who to believe about COVID. I think this is March 2nd. And that one-on-one -on -one conversation led to me and him diving deep into it. 
and then come into a realization of our own that everyone else around us is crazy. And we're just going to have to sit this one out and see how it rolls. But next time something like this happens in America, I don't want to be in a sitting still position. Like I want to be yeah. able to make um, the you know most responsible choices possible. Yeah. That, that's gonna because I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like responsible choices have been negated by uh, politicizing it. You know, I, I keep telling people, and I talk, I talk bad about Corona because I, I don't, I believe it's real, but by all means, it's real. It, it, it has effects. It kills people. But I feel like the rationality and responsible responses are are shut down due to. Uh, I don't know if it's fear tactics or just purely political agenda, but I feel like, and, and I thought, uh, yeah, I thought Mike Pence actually said it good in the debate. And I think Trump did in one of the, or the last debate where it's like, why are you politicizing coronavirus? You know, they're so scared and so horrified about the way that Donald Trump has treated COVID. But then Biden wants to say that he has the ability to cure COVID or he, he knows this, the scheme to take care of it better, yet he won't share that with the Trump campaign because maybe he doesn't have it or maybe he doesn't want them to do good. But to me, it's like, so you're saying as an American citizen, you can help Americans, but you don't want to help them because then you'd be giving it to Trump and then Trump will help them. To me, that doesn't sound like someone you would want a president. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of the, it's, it just blows my I've mind. About it. I've never taken the angle on it. And I, I thought, you know, I was over here, Michael Jordan, making every shot. Every yeah. <laughs> Dude, you just, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. If you're right, I mean, he was a senator or is it, you know, obviously politically powerful, you know, political connections. Yeah. Probably has a yeah. in his basement. I don't know. <laughs> but he, he has all these answers. You know, call Trevor, hey, man, uh, kitten caboodle, young yamadoodle. Uh, this is how you, uh, yep. that's how he talks. Um, that's how that is. And I just give him something. Right. Oh my gosh. That was the, I saw the one where they, they paired it up with uh, Jim Carrey. <laughs> I forgot. I think it was on Liar Liar or something. But I was like, man, that's just too accurate. It's too close. It's those things where it's like, it's not even funny because it's so painful. It's so painful. But, but whoever thought of the uh, Jim Carrey reference? Yeah, that's just timeless. Like I, I was like, how perfect is that? I'll have to watch again and ten more times. And yeah, you know. it's crazy how people can come up with that so quick. They're like, oh, this clip would be perfect for this situation. They just and it's on two minutes after the clip actually happened. I try to come up with stuff, and then I find myself like, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, work. And so I'm like, you know, yeah, real stuff. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> several times that's happened. And to be honest with you, like I, I see your stuff, and I see how raw it is. And you know it's, it's inspiring uh, to to be like, yeah, screw it. Like at this point, I can't lose any followers. Really, uh, what's the worst thing that yeah. can happen? Uh, yeah, that's what I, I mean. Even even with six hundred thousand followers, I just don't care. Like 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 so many people are like, oh, you lost a follower because you you know I, the crazy thing about about uh, a lot of conservatives though is if I even start to lean towards a different section, they start like backfiring on me. You know, like the, there's a, a recent shooting. Um, I forgot what that shooting was. Who got some? Some guy got shot in in Louisville or not Louisville. Uh, I forgot what it was, but the cop shot him. His mom was there. They were all mad at the cops, oh, yeah. and they just lo unloaded on the dude. And I and I suggested like, you know what? Maybe they should have done this. They could have done some other things. You know, both bad situations. They called the cops on it. Like all these different. I kind of weighed all the options, and a lot of conservatives were like, no, if you're doing that, you deserve to get shot. Blah blah blah. I'm like, guys, I'm not. I'm not taking a side on on this criminal side. I'm just purely like, let's look at all, you know, let's, like I always do. Let's look at everything. I'm not going to jump on one side no, purely no, because no, no, stop it. Yeah. Right. One side only. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that's, that's my biggest thing is like, you got to just weigh, weigh your options, man. I don't know what my point was telling that, but it's just, it's crazy to me how, how we, we can't, you know, we don't always have to be right. And we don't always have to be in this one direction. Every now and then there's situations every, that vary. Every national event that happens, if we take care of every single tragedy and we talk about every tragedy that happens in America, let alone the world, that's all you yeah. get done. And you won't even get that. Yep. No, not even close. Not even close. Like I'm sure in, in Knoxville, like right now, you know, there's probably some kids who are hungry. Like yep. that's local issues that I really uh, will change. And, and make a difference. Yeah. And I find myself, you know, my fingers get a little itchy. It's like an alcoholic, you know, at, at a bar, 
uh, but he has to wait there for the, the cab for whatever reason. Yeah. And he's in, you know, I'm on Facebook. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't have that drink. Like, don't start typing. Yep. You're going to get on Facebook. Yep. Don't, like don't dive hours. into it. And they're like, oh, I'll just send one message. It's not that big a deal. It'll, it'll be, it'll fine. be so clear. They'll totally understand it. And then like, you know, five hours later, you're like, you know, just going at it. Yep. Like, wow. Yep. I, I do that when I put, when I post TikToks, I'm like, this, this will make sense. And I post it. And then like, I'm like, ah, uh, and, and then I, I'm not even lie. I delete, I post and delete some TikToks because it'll be there's 60 seconds. You know what I mean? And same thing with like comments. Like you can leave a comment, but it's only. Why, why are you, uh, why'd you say sometimes you delete them and act like that's a bad thing? Do people give you shit for deleting them? Oh yeah. They're like, oh my gosh. Or they're like, TikTok took town, TikTok censoring you. Or why'd you take it down? Did you feel like you said something wrong or you were wrong or you took the L? But for me, it's like, I, 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 a lot of times pick a topic that is just too deep and too intricate to explain in 60 seconds. And the people on TikTok that disagree with me are not, and I don't mean this, well, I do kind of mean it in a little bit of a negative way, are not educated enough to fully grasp the subtext of my video. Like the one that went viral that got like however many millions of views about me saying, you know, welfare um, and and handouts are, are a detriment to the black community because we don't try to go out and thrive. Everyone wants to be like, well, what about disabilities? What about white people that are on welfare? But I'm like, you guys want me to unpack disabilities and welfare and underprivileged people in all of America? I'm it's talking six, about one six. specific section. Yeah. And it's insane. People don't understand it. So that's why I'll, I'll post it. I'm like, oh, it's way too deep. I got to take it off because I can already tell I can't even go through and explain to the people who are commenting. Well, well here's, here's my idea for, for TikTok and how I'm going to try to start using it uh, more. You know, ask me tomorrow if I'm doing this. I'll figure it out. But what I'm going to try to do <laughs> is uh, give, you know, clips of the podcast and do podcasts like daily. Like you want to talk shit? Yeah. You want to argue with me about this? Hey, Send me your email. I'll get you a link to this podcast. I'll bring you on in, and we can talk. Yeah. About it. But I can't talk about how important this is to me in sixty seconds. If that's as important as it is to you, then we probably are going to disagree with how much time needs to be spent on this in the first place. So see, they won't. They won't do it though. I I that's I, I, I did that's that. Good. That's that's good. Yeah. We don't, we don't want those people. Or I don't. We, we know. We yeah, that is true. Because now all of a sudden we have people who are actually going to make a difference. In the local community who are looking to educate rather than just clout chase and get a dope video yeah. with a bunch of views I love you, John. which never is sadly what clout you have never use the word clout <laughs> i don't know if that 2020, but if i find them i'm gonna bring some 2020 on them like uh-uh. <laughs> i i love using it because i think it is the perfect word for someone who wants fake validation i think that is like when I say clout, yeah, no, I don't I don't ever use it in a good way. It is one hundred percent you're chasing clout in the sense of you're worth nothing, or at least you think that. So you're trying to tell have someone tell you that you are not worth nothing. And that's what a lot of these Democrat kids on TikTok are doing, is they're pushing this BS real clicky video that's like Trump's taking away gay marriage and people are like, oh no. And then they share it. They like it. Like you're the smartest person ever. And then you're like, Hey, how about you come on my podcast and we talk this long form? No. And I'm like, but you obviously want to like help people and change people because you're giving them information. Why don't we give you a platform to talk about it? Or like, oh no, I just want to read headlines. You're like, okay. So you don't really want to help people. You just want to give the views. This translates to business. Remember we were talking earlier about everyone's always talking. Yeah. 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 Cool. Until it comes down to doing cool stuff, then everyone's uh, and no one does it. Yeah, no one does it. There you go. Thank you for the save. Fake facade, right? And so, when I got on TikTok at first, especially during COVID, I'm like, you know, going through here, seeing everyone saying, you know, it's COVID's not real. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> it is real. Then I see the next one, like the government's gonna come take you and your babies and your dogs and, and the train. Yeah, and I'm like, oh gosh, what? Oh, okay, so we have. Yeah. This set of people who doesn't think it's real. This set of people who think the government's going to be here tomorrow outside their house. And then somewhere in the middle, I hope someone's concerned that the possibility of government overstepping boundaries and not giving those rights back is historical. Yeah. And to me, I th- back on the COVID last thing on it, I think Trump did a very, very, uh, I'm going to say an awesome job and everyone knows it and everyone's saying it. He had no idea how this was going to react in America. 
how it acted in no. Italy is going to be different than how it acted in England because people's social cultures, believe it or not, are pretty different. Yeah. So, Knoxville, Tennessee, Waco, Texas, probably pretty similar. Waco, Texas, yeah. New York City, buyers pretty different. Are a little differently, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, th- I think it's it's. Problem. It, it panicked here. I mean, that's the thing. Like, it's, it, again, like, uh, yeah, like you can't solve it for everyone. Like you said, there's so many different micro and macro climates all across the United States. You can't, there's no one size fits all. Like the sky is falling. Like, what did you want me to say? Like, 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 I don't get it. I don't get it. People are like, he downplayed it. I'm like, Shh. coming from the people who said he's not my president and never listened to a word he said prior, why did you all of a sudden be like, oh, he downplayed COVID and he just misled, he didn't mislead you for shit. You were paying attention in the first place. I don't get it. I don't get it. It makes no sense. Attention. So I really hope that we don't <laughs> yeah, right. those people. Can we like just be accountability buddies? Or uh, what do you call those? Yeah. Buddies? Yeah, accountability buddies. Where Thund- we're thunder we're buddies? <laughs> you want to be my thunder buddy? You know thunder buddy? Uh, that's <laughs> Everything's mutual here. Um, the the scariest thing to me is seeing Republicans go on this side of things. One day when ties have you know, shifted, hopefully, uh, to more conservative local approach, I hope that I don't find myself thinking I'm at the coffee shop like, this dang generation, you know, blah, 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 blah. What's the next headline? I'm going to say that too. You know, I just really hope yeah. I don't find myself there. I think our generation yeah. has a responsibility for the first time in history honestly the first time in history that we know of that we can take information that's accurate and share it or we can take misinformation yeah. and pass it around like the plague that's it's we, we yeah we really do have a, a, an ability and and I hope it I hope it continues this way because I think it is powerful if used correctly but we do have an ability more so than ever before to actually overshadow mainstream media and that's never been an option for, yeah, that's never been an option. So I, I think it's insane that you and I can sit here on this platform and potentially reach millions and millions of people with our personal researched opinions. Whereas before it was like, if you didn't have that mainstream outlet, you couldn't reach a, a fraction of that. So by by means of seven degrees of separation, your word's gonna spread. It's gonna be regurgitated time and time again if your message is potent enough. So you have to make sure that when you put something out there, and I've gotten in trouble by that, like putting a video out there that didn't say it all in one video, and it got shared by itself without part one or part three. And next thing you know, people are sharing this misleading information. So it's really important that we understand we do have this traction. TikTok has literally opened up the game game for nobodies to get millions and millions of views in a matter of days. I try to so like anything, yeah. anything that you put out there, could possibly be the next viral video that gets played on NBC on the Today Show. Like, you don't know. So it's it's scary, but it also really does give people a second place to find true, honest, researched information, which is potent. I want to even go one step further. Um, if you pass me the ball, he played for, you know football back in the day, so pass me the ball here. Yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't catch balls or, or, or throw them, not at all. Really? What were you? No. I was an outside linebacker defensive end. Over here hitting people. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're cool. <laughs> we're friends. Uh, I, I think we have a responsibility. Is when it boils down to what keeps me up at night, the responsibility of our generation, and I'm talking specifically like 35 and younger. For some reason, people over 35, you know, 40, they don't seem to grasp how gravitating social media is for these young kids it's like having yeah. an atari non-stop every video game in the world the kid can dream of right right there in their living room or right. even worse mm-hmm. than that in the car walking yep yeah. so everywhere everywhere so I, i'd like yes. enough of people like you and i are getting together and thinking okay so how can we you know make this into a um I don't know, not something so 2020-ish. Like, how can we not do this again? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of, the thing is, like, a lot of people that are 17, 18, 15, 16 are really starting, like, I I was not into politics at 15, 16, not even 17, not even 18. 
But now there's people that are like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 that are legit deep diving into politics, into what's going on in the world. Like we kind of grew up in a generation early on in life where we there was nothing that serious going on in our childhood years to where we felt like we needed to have a deep dive. Some people did because they truly enjoyed it. But now people are doing it because they need to know what's going on. So if the information that they find, like I see a lot of, and it goes both ways, is completely biased to one side or completely biased to the other side, we're raising up a generation of complete polarized individuals who hate one side or the other. Instead of being like, look, you know, we're going to create information of us just discussing. And, and that's why I try to bring on as many Democrats on my podcast as possible to just discuss and be like, look, I don't agree with you at all. We get heated a little bit, but at the end, we're like, hey, you know what? I respect you for being like, you know, passionate about what you believe, and and you respect me for being passionate about what I believe. And at least if they don't walk away with anything else, they walk away with the fact that we can all be friends and discuss and truly understand what we believe, rather than this whole you're a racist somehow and and whatever you know other insults they just throw at people blindly, which is crazy. Yeah, I didn't know I was such a racist. And, and the- I say that in a, in a humorous way, <laughs> but I got to be honest with you, man. Um, as somebody who went to an all-black university in Oklahoma for an entire summer when he was 15 years old, grew up on a farm, saw maybe two yeah. black people my entire life. I'm in a dormitory with 70 or 80 African-Americans and three other yeah. white guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to react the first five or 10 minutes, but then I was like, I'm just going to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's up? It's man? a hard read. Yeah, it's you know it's so hard. But they at the end of the day it was some terrible you know like nineties uh, movie where the the white guy couldn't dance and they taught me how to dance like they taught me how to sea walk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you taught, yeah, it's like it's like the Remember the Titans. Uh, no, it was like that. Unfortunately, I was that guy. <laughs> uh, and I remember uh, we were in one of the rooms, and uh, the guys were showing me how to how to sea walk, and they're like, "Hey man, we gotta open up the windows. The girls want to watch you sea walk." I'm like, "Oh yeah." Okay, and I'll probably look over my ass, <laughs> you know, because the girls are like, like, from the other side of the, you know, uh, the area. Like, oh, this guy. And they're like, oh, this white guy, he thinks he's seen walking. But <laughs> at the same time, man, I was having a great time, you know. Yeah. So. It, it's it's yeah, one of those things where you just. You... Racist. Now I'm like, wait, I'm not sure what fight you guys have been fighting, but like I was on, on this uh, level playing field and quality thing for like. Yeah. Like, two decades. Where y'all been? Like what is going on? Yeah, uh, it, it's it's racist doesn't even. I mean, when you say a word so much nowadays, racist, racist purely just means you disagree with me now. Like it's one of those words that is now just needs to be redefined because the amount of of racist that's being called it doesn't mean what it means. You know, um, at this point in time, I wouldn't call a KKK member racist. It's not potent enough. You know, like it's just it's this it's just ridiculous. Right. It's uh like I hate even saying the word. That's what kind of word racist should be, but rapist. Like that is a serious yeah. accusation. That is, yeah, the the uh, the low of lows. And if you have that kind of characteristic and that kind of uh, we call that diction or rhetoric, we call that a connotation. Yeah, connotation to the word. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll make a word up. It's uh, it means racist. I don't know. Clout came out. Of <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm sure we can come up with something that'll. But and and that's what I truly believe 2020 has been is 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 been a polarized situation. Um, and, and it comes it comes with with I know we talked about business before this and, and and starting companies, going out and doing. Um, I feel like a lot of people are are starting to to buy into this. I need to wait for the government to do something. Um, everyone else is bad. Everyone else doesn't want to help me. And that and that's. That's, you know, it, like I hear people calling people racist more than I hear people saying, hey, like, can I help you? Or, hey, do you need, you know, this or can I do this? Or I'm super appreciative of you for doing this. Like, it's it's insane. Right. <laughs> uh, so, hey, uh, hey, guys, if you ever want to have a podcast, make sure you mute all your stuff before. Uh, it'll, right. I don't even know how you're plugging all that stuff in there. I plug oh, my man. mic in and that's it. I got like a radio shack over here. dude. I'm just plugging stuff in. Maybe it'll work. Just, just seeing where it's where it pops up. We're good. Uh, so, I have about uh, ten minutes left, and I do want to hit on your business though. Uh, we talked earlier about yeah. how uh, the selections over tomorrow. One way or another. Just get it Thank, God. Thank God. Yes. All right. I'm still gonna be wearing my uh, my awesome American flag. Your, yeah. There we go. All right. That's all year round. 
that's, that's, that's all year round. And I, I know it looks like I'm stepping on the American flag, but I'm actually wearing it. That's how that works. The biggest thing that I want to take away from this podcast is tomorrow. And you are a guy, a man, who's centered around taking care of today and planning for tomorrow. Yes, sir. So hold up one second. So I I just got a sorry I just got a bunch of messages saying that my TikTok has been that has has been hacked. Let's check it out. And someone just posted a video. That's crazy. Hold up. Sorry, everybody who's listening, but uh. Hey, you guys remember that one song? It went ba da ba ba da ba Um I'm trying to reset the password real quick just before they please change please, all my please, information. Please, please, please. Okay, I'll I'll talk a little bit more about you. Uh so I went on to John's TikTok today and uh you know, whenever you have a podcast and you have guests come on, you wanna be sure to do a um I don't know, at least thirty minutes to an hour of, of research of you know your guest. Uh, out of respect and also out of the possibilities or capabilities of uh, networking because that's that's what this is. John did a really good job of tackling the merch monster on TikTok. I'll, I'll, I'm coining that, by the way, John, the merch monster. Yeah, the <laughs> so, so many times on TikTok, you know, people are... Um, trying to get to you know, X amount of followers, hundreds of thousands, basically. Just to be like, hey, I got this uh, new shirt. I'm glad, so glad you guys are following me. And if, uh, you know what, why don't you go ahead and just buy my shirts? And you know, for no reason, you know, like, hey, I made a funny video of me farting. Remember that? Like, I have a shirt. You know, it says, I farted on it. You should buy it. <laughs> that's, that's what a lot of them, to me, <laughs> But, but uh, that's, that's so true. That's the best way to put that. That's funny. Uh, man, I, I wish I was that clever all the time. Uh, you're you're rubbing off on me, John. Here, I think <laughs> when you when you talked about merch, I immediately was thinking on this you know, TikTok video I'm watching. I'm like, oh no, not John, not him too. They got the merch monster attacking John. He's gonna sell merch now. But I gotta say, uh, you were honest about it. You were genuine. Uh, you talked about why. You started it, and you said how it's not merch, because you know, as, as we talked about earlier, it's not about the um, merchandise. It's about what you've been doing, who you are, what you believe in. You know, if I wear a Trump shirt, you know, I'm not actually Donald Trump, but you know, as far as yeah. right now, that's the mentality of um, of what I believe. You know, I guess in seventh grade, I think some guys who were not me, thank goodness, were uh, uh, Jinkos? Is that what they call it? Jinkos? Jinkos? What's that? Jin yeah, exactly. You wouldn't know that because you're uh, African American. No, <laughs> I have no idea what that is. There, there are these jeans that are really awful. Um, but mer merch is merch. However, at the end of the day, your message is your message. And I think that's really cool that you did a way better job than I'm doing right now uh, talking about how your merch uh, is actually about yeah, no, I, the platform. Uh, it, uh, it, it was it was something that it was something that I really wanted to create more of like a movement. You know what I mean? I'm I'm good. I, I had to email my my TikTok person because I can't seem to change the password. Wait, hold on. Um, you have a TikTok person? Um, yeah, she because I I was partnered with TikTok for a while. Um, they never and uh, I <laughs> they they sent me for they they originally brought me on to do a. Uh, construction stuff but i quickly changed that on accident but anyway yeah so for the merch man it's, it's one of those things i wanted to create a movement that's all it was you know merch is like wear my face wear my name i wanted to do something dope i was like you know what i'm a businessman let's create a business yeah like you know what i mean like it's it's really taking a high like i mean no one cares about me as a person like i'm john dawson like i'm nobody but i i took a high where people were following me paying attention to what i was saying and decided to take that as an opportunity to kind of create a clothing line that's going to have a community and a movement behind it. Uh, merch sells as long as you're popular. Um, I want this to be, you know, just as popular even even when people aren't necessarily watching me for political reasons. Um, because all overall, no matter how the world is, 
uh, much love is something that stands, you know, like, like we talked about, I don't like people are just rude. Like people are just like, I appreciate hey, tough hey, love, hey, but hey, I just hey, can't hey, hold, stand hold when people are rude. Your message is love here. Get that hate speech <laughs> out of here. John. Donald. <laughs> I hate the not love. You know, if yeah. you're not loving, I hate you. No, much, <laughs> much love. Not hate. Much I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, share this, uh, this website and, uh, for anyone watching, uh, consider being part of the uh, much love. Oh, how do you say it? You're the you're the voice. So how do you say much love? Like much love. Slogan. Much love. I can't say that. It's just much love. Just like every every. I usually it's like my sign off. You know, much love. Just much love. So like There's more uh in the love. You know, much I'll, love. I'll practice in front of the mirror. I'll, I'll get yeah, you'll get there. You'll get there. It, it's it's difficult. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a difficult word to say. You know. You got, and you don't want to be like, oh, much love. You know, you don't want it to sound like a porn site. It needs to sound something, oh, you know. <laughs> you need to I make sure it sounds F -word, like. F -word, saying P word. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's crazy. Hey, let's check out the website. Hey, graphics guy. Yeah, let's do that. Let's 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 take a you look at it. it. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> see, what it see what it looks like. Duh, much love clothing. Okay. Oh, dude. The, the hand signal? That's that's my sign, dude. That's my signature. You know you stole that from me, dude. Look at me. Look at me. You did. You stole that from me. I'm half black. Okay. There's another. There's other things mixed with me that involve this. Okay. People keep telling me that this doesn't mean I love you, and I'm like, I know this doesn't mean I love you. I'm not like like an idiot. Oh, all American Most time. dopeness. Hi, welcome. All to American, American dopeness website. We got all you want. We got men's, ladies, all American dopeness. Now we got hoodies. You know, it's going to be cold out there, especially when you're a Biden supporter. All alone. So we got the hoodies. <laughs> cold winter. Oh, it's going to be a cold winter. Dude, are you serious right we now? We even got crop tops if you don't like to keep your stomach too warm. Nah, dude, I hate you so much right now. Like, I have been. <laughs> did not I send you an emoji with that on it? I think I did. With what? Um, with what on it? Talking that the, the hand move. Maybe. Dude, but I mean, I've been I've been throwing I've been throwing these up since high school football. So, oh no no, I mean I'm white. Uh. <laughs> um, no. So whenever the the fist you know started going up, the black fist, I'm thinking, well, I'm a white dude, and I'm getting these messages a lot. You know, like you know, black power. I'm thinking. I don't know how to come back from that. Like American flag seems too offensive, so I've just been throwing out the cool. Uh, yeah, like because it's super chill. It's one of those things where it's like you know, just much love, hang out, chill, solidarity. I mean, that's what that's what the shaka really means. It's like standing in solidarity, like a, a unified, like hey, you and me, like whoever you're throwing it up to, is just kind of you know, just unity, man. That's something that we we miss a lot of. Yeah, I, for me, it's just like chill. Hey man, like you cool? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're gonna, you gonna rob yeah. something? That's that's maybe I don't know. Yeah, you you can take you can take everything. That's cool. I got guns. That's, that's whatever. <laughs> see see how far I get. It's cool. Whatever. <laughs> that, that's that's the vibe. <laughs> that's, that's a perfect place to end this. So uh, I'm not gonna say on, on the on the much love thing, but the website is awesome. I'll be sure to include that in the links. Um, thanks for everybody awesome. for watching the podcast. Um, let me do like a two minute thing here real fast, uh, John. Yeah. Uh, the podcast has grown from zero followers three months ago to a hundred uh, now, which is a pretty good increase. I'm not sure the percentage because zero is hard to divide by, but I do appreciate <laughs> everyone uh, subscribing. And if you would please, my goal, uh, I'm sure as a business owner, John, you know this, you have to set goals and timelines. So my goal is for January 1st to have a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, it seems impossible, but that's why I want to do it. So if you guys would please uh, share, like, comment, tell me I'm ugly, tell me I'm bald. I know uh, COVID's, you know, 2020 has been a pretty rough year, and uh, <laughs> I got the Britney Spears haircut to prove it. So John Dawson. Oh, damn. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll, I'll let you give your uh, words. Hey, I appreciate all you guys watching, man. Definitely go. So go subscribe to this, man. Um, this, this, this is going to be, this is going to be something where we can get a lot of information. I know you're going to be talking about business too. So I'll definitely have to try to come back and, and talk some business ideas that I got rolling around. So, um, but anyway, guys, you know, again, you guys can find me, John underscore Dawson.
pretty much anywhere. And um, Much Love Clothing is my new business that I'm working on. Go check it out if you want. Um, but anyway, yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. All right. God bless America, Trump 2020, and uh, much love. All right. Later, guys. Perfect. I appreciate it, bro.